Good evening. Welcome to a follow-up video to my previous video on monads. This is probably the last video that I will do with a presentation, um, but we will see. Um, today I will talk about something that you might read online uh, if you're looking to learn more about monads, which is some, something, a sentence like monads implement flat map or monads are uh, things with a flat map uh, method or monads uh, have flat map, functors have map, something like that. So I just want to, to clarify what is meant by that. Uh, and I remember when I was first starting to look really into monads and stuff, I found some websites and a video and blog posts that were talking about flat map. And they were saying, well, a monad is just something that has flat map. And it wasn't really clear to me. So um, I will explain, now that I know uh, what is meant by this, I will explain what they mean by that, what is flat map. And I will also, uh, and I will also explain, in my opinion, why I think this is not the right approach to talk about monads to people that have no idea what a monad is. Because if the question is, what is a monad? And the answer is, well, a monad is a thing with flat map, then the question becomes, what is flat map and why do some objects, why do some entities have flat map and some others don't? Uh, so it's not really explaining anything. So let's, um, let's start. So if you don't know anything about monads and you landed on this video, watch this one first. So the slides are in the, on the description below. Click that link and watch the first video. I will also link it directly in the description. Watch that video. I try to explain what monads are using what I hope is an intuitive uh, example. Um, and once you've watched that video, once you've played around with the code, once you've let it uh, mature in your head a little bit, maybe come back to this video. If you already know what are monads, but have some trouble understanding what flat map is, and what's the difference with bind, what's the difference with fmap, and all these other things, then you can stay and watch along. Um, so, there are various definitions of monads. There's the one I use, which is to say a monad is something that is constituted of a function factory. So a function factory, remember in the previous video, I talked about these function factories, which are functions that return functions, so functions that build new functions, um, plus a function called bind. And this bind function allows you to uh, compose these new uh, constructed functions that the function factory returns. Um, I use function factories instead of units. So if you know a bit more about monads and you know what unit is, um, unit is a function that takes a, a value and wraps it into a monadic value. I use function factories uh, instead of unit because I think if you're an R programmer, function factories uh, speak to you. Uh, and unit does not. And unit, uh, you can construct it by using the function factory and, um, build and, and passing to it the identity function. So unit is function factory of identity function. So uh, that's why I use function factories. Again, if you don't, didn't really understand this part, no worries. Function factory plus bind, you got a monad. Um, the second definition you might find online is this one. Monads are nothing but monoids in the category of vendor functors. You can forget about this one, but if you're really curious, you can click on this link. This is um, as it will um, send you to a Stack Overflow answer, which explains that. So this is from category theory, and um, it, yeah, it's a bit complicated, uh, but again, you don't need to understand this definition to use monoids. That's the, that's the nice thing. And then you might find this, uh, so the, the subject of tonight, monads are objects with a flat mat method. So what is flat map and why does having a flat map method makes you a monad? That's what we're going to answer tonight. So monads are objects with a flat map method, question mark. Well, what you should know right off the bat is that flat map is exactly the same thing as bind. So bind, again, is this function that allows you to um, compose this decorated function, so these functions that return monadic values. Flat map is the same thing. But the difference is the way to get there. So the way that we got with bind, and I think is more intuitive, is that we started so with our function factories and then we realized, oh shoot, we cannot compose them. 
So, well, let's write a new function that will do the composing for us, that will do the composition of these functions for us. And this is what we call pint. So we implemented that function directly. Flatmap is different because flatmap is going to be built using two other functions. So to implement flatmap, you need these two other functions. You need flatten, hence flatmap, so flat, flat from flatten, and fmap. So something else, fmap and flatmap are different things. So this is also something that sometimes you find online. People say, well, fmap is just uh, like a shorter name of fmap, but it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. Okay, then those are different functions that do different things. Um, flatten is also called join sometimes, which is really a bad name. It has nothing to do with jo joining um, data frames. Um, well, I mean, you could, no, it has nothing to do with joining, forget about that. Flatten is much more uh, clearer as a name. So we'll use flatten. Plus flat map, it's called flat map and not join map. So flat map, flatten. And also flatten, you may know uh, a flatten from the per package that flattens lists, so that flattens nested lists, and it's kind of the same thing, actually. So if you already know flatten from per, you will understand what, flat, what flatten does here. Um, but we will start with uh, fmap, because fmap, I think, is more uh, simple to, to understand. So let's use the time it uh, function. So this is the function factory I used. So this function factory builds a new function, and this new function times itself. So this new function returns two things. It, or rather, it returns a list with two elements. It returns the result of the arguments applied to it, and it returns how long it took to run. So if you, if you watch my previous video, you should be familiar with that. So this is a function factory. So let's um, use fmap. To do what? To fmap will take a monadic value, so it will already take an output with, so it will take a list basically uh, with a result and the execution time, and a function that is not decorated, okay? So, for example, square root. So this is not a function that went through my function factory. And fmap will evaluate this non decorated function on the uh, 10 value basically, and will return the result as a monadic value. Okay, so fmap allows you to do uh, to evaluate non decorated functions on monadic values. Now, you might think, well, why is this useful? Well, it's useful if you do some more steps. Next step. Oh, yeah, by the way, here I define this monadic value m for, for my example, and basically. This is what unit would do, okay? Unit would build these m's for you. Here, yeah, because my, my monadic values are nothing but lists, I can use the list function from R, but if you have a, a more complex monadic value, a more complex container, if you will, um, then unit can be useful to have. But again, unit is nothing else than the identity function that went through my function factor. So that's why I, I prefer defining monads as function factories plus bind instead of unit plus bind. But um, now, what happens if you use fmap on a timed function? So what happens if you use fmap on a function that went through the function factory? Okay, so we actually we wouldn't need to use fmap because our function went through the function factory. So uh, if we want to use a monadic value on it, we need to, to use bind, right? But what happens if you use fmap instead? Well, let's see. So we use fmap on m. So remember, m is this monadic value on TSQRT, and now the result is this kind of nested nested monadic value. So we have a result where the result is a monadic value, so it's result in a running time, and then we get a running time. So we have this, this nested list. So what do you think will happen now? Well, we need to flatten this. It's simple as that. Here, flatten um, will be a bit different than flatten from per, and I will explain why. So flatten will take MMA, so monad of monad of A, if you will, okay, this nested monad, will take the result over here. My, my light here is so hot that I'm sweating. <laughs> will take the result of result, so this will become the result, so result of result will become the result. But the running time needs to be the sum of the two running times. So that's why it's not just like, it's not just a simple flatten operation like Per does, but it has a bit more logic into it. And this um, flatten function is very dependent on the type of monads you're working with. So depending on what you're doing, flatten will be very different. Um, so this is this is quite important to, to keep in mind. So this will add the two running times 
And if we flatten A, now we get a result and the running time, uh, which was the sum of the two operations. Okay. So I think you, you're seeing where we're going with this. Because now, uh, so we nested this, this uh, nested list, fair enough. Now, uh, using fmap and then flattening is equivalent to using bind, actually. Why? Because let's see what happens if I use a timed log. I pass 10 to t as qrt, so this gives a monadic value. And now I fmap a monadic function. So a decorated function on this monadic value. So I get this thing. Okay, I guess this nested list. And now I flatten. So what will flatten do? Flatten will take this result, which is the result of 10 SQRT log. So log of SQRT of 10. That's this. And will sum the two execution times. This is what flatten does. So now I get this. So basically, we just composed T SQRT and T log. So now let's see uh, what, how we can define flat map. So flat map is nothing more, more than the composition of flatten and F map. So this, I define the composition operator for functions, but you could use the uh, per compose function to do that. Um, so flat map is flatten after F map. So that's how you read this flatten after F map. And now that I have flat map, well, if I do 10 SQRT flat map log, or if I do 10 SQRT bind log, I get the same result. If you see, this is the result of flat map, this is the result of bind, same thing. Well, not exactly, the running time will always be different. Uh, because In theory, it should be the same, of course. Um, in practice, it will never be exactly the same. That's just not how it works, right? And that's why you, you can't really uh, uh, compare immediately uh, this monadic values one to the other. You will always get false if you do a comparison of them because the running time is different. But apart from that, we understand that it's the same thing. So that's it. That's uh, so, so flat map, bind, same thing, allows you to compose these decorated functions. But you see that the way we got there is very different. Because again, bind kind of comes naturally as the, as the solution to the problem of composing these uh, decorated functions. You think a little bit about it. You see, OK, how, what, what should I do? Well, I should grab the result give it to my function and I should grab the running time and add to the other running time and then you come up with, with bind very naturally I think um, but flat map not really because flat map you have to think about f map so first of all why would you need f map that's not something that might necessarily come to you and then also uh, this uh, flatten uh, so I, I don't like to, to, to introduce monads using flat map however in practice it might be easier to program fmap and then flatten and then composing the two then building binds directly so depending on what you're doing depending on the monad you're working with it might be easier to do that than to do binds directly um, and i saw some examples i don't want to go into this for this video i might do something about that later but i need really to think about it because it's not easy but um but i saw an example recently and i'm kind of studying it where where this approach uh, is easier to compose the functions then then coming up with bind directly so uh, it's important to know both uh, but if you see online uh, something like uh, yeah monads implement flat map now you know what they mean by that so i think that's all i wanted to show you i think this is the last slide yeah conclusion flat map is equivalent to bind so i hope you enjoyed these two videos on monads i will continue talking about monads in the future for sure um, but I think this was the last bit where I showed some slides. Maybe not. Maybe if I if I find another difficult topic, I will do some slides. It's easier this way than to program live. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed and uh, have a good one. Bye bye.